How many times per year do you lose a match and you end up the match thinking that your opponent was much too strong and that you had no chance to win the match? Not many times. No, no, no. Most of the time you end up the match thinking that you could have won. And when you say that to yourself, I hear, I should have won. So what should you have done to win? You might think that you should have played better on the most important points. You should have stick to the tactics. You should have stayed focused on every point. Take more of your chances when you had the opportunities. Avoid feeling angry and frustrated. Does this ring a bell? This being said, most of the elements that differentiate a victory from a defeat are mental. And what is true at the leisure level is also true at the highest level. This brings to the main question, how do I progress on the mental side? There are two key moments that as a player you should use to be mentally efficient in matches. Before the match, what I would call the preparation, and during the match, which is between every point and at every changeover. Today we're going to talk about how to prepare mentally for a tennis match, and later I'll do a video on how to be strong mentally during the match. Compared to other sports, tennis is providing a lot of breaks and time to think. Did you know that the time that you actually really play tennis during a match represents less than 20% of the time? That just says that 80% of the match time could be used to be mentally ready to perform. Unfortunately, it's used by most of the players as a distraction time. What I mean is that players speak to themselves in a way that makes them weaker. A lot of coaches speak about the body language. They want the players to have a positive body language. The only problem with that is that the body language translates what you tell yourself, what you think deep inside. Can you imagine a player thinking, I play so bad, I'm such a loser, and at the same time have a positive body language? Of course not. Body language won't change the way you think and won't change the way you speak to yourself. I don't believe that. But on the other hand, if you are able to modify the way you speak to yourself and emphasize it with the adequate body language, then the combination becomes the most powerful tool that you can build. When you get ready for the competition, you need to have clear goals. I'm sure that the immense majority of you just go to the match without any goal. If you do so, you have no grip on whether you'll win or lose. If you are on a great day, you'll probably win and you'll probably lose most of the other days, which actually are much more frequent. Too many players focus on the wrong things. Winning. Winning is not a goal. Winning is a reward. This is not a good goal. Forget it. Playing well, it doesn't depend on you. You can decide to play well, so it cannot be a goal. It's interesting to see that players who care too much about playing well end up frustrated most of the time. They are the guys that you hear saying, I don't feel the ball today. When you set up your goals, there are four elements that you have to consider. First, those goals have to depend only on you. For example, you decide that you will pump your fist on every point, or you decide that you will stay maximum one meter away from the baseline the whole match. An example of a bad goal would be, I will play deep. You can decide that you will play every shot with the goal to play deep, considering that it's better to play out to deep than in the service box, but you cannot decide to play deep because this is only a wish. Two, they have to be realistic. Set goals that you know you have a good chance to be able to make. Three, you have to set goals that if they are completed, you consider that you have a big chance to win the match, and at the same time, it's very important that your goals develop your style of tennis for the future. Four, set up a maximum of three goals, not more. If you go to a match with too many goals, you'll forget half of them and you'll get confused. When to prepare for the match? I would say as late as possible. I hate to do it the day before with the players because they kept thinking about it. Most of the time they don't spend a good night. They kind of overthink, they can come with too much stress less energy because they burn a lot of energy thinking and overthinking about the match. The morning of the match, write down your goals and I would say 30 minutes before entering the court, read it and make sure they are in your mind and promise this to yourself. I know that those goals are ideal to win the match, but it's more important for me to leave the court having respected my goals than winning. The goals can be tactical or mental. It can be, for example, 
I will stick to my opponent's backhand until I get a short ball and then I will attack. This is a tactical goal, but it can also be something like every time I have a negative feeling during the match, I will tell this sentence to myself. Sometimes you go to the match and the level of stress is so high that you are unable to play your tennis. You have this level of stress all the time because your focus is not on goals that only depend on you, but on other things that you cannot control. When your focus is there, the fact that you don't have control on it brings the level of stress to a very high level, easy to understand. Somebody drives a car 200 kilometers per hour, you are super scared. You drive the same speed, but you have the wheel, you are much less scared. Because in one case, you feel you have the control, in the other case, somebody else has it. Once again, the only way to lower your stress le level is to stay focused on things that you control. All the exterior factors like the weather, the surface, so many things that can enter your mind, you put them out. You focus only on what makes you perform well. We're done for the match preparation. Now, if you have any question regarding it or regarding any mental question, feel free to leave me a comment and I will be happy to answer. Get ready for the next video about the mental, which will be about how to deal on the mental side during a match. And if you like my videos, subscribe to my YouTube channel. See you.